everybody, and welcome back to PDA, your handheld guide to understanding psychological data analysis. Today we'll be discussing dependent t-tests. Now, dependent t-tests use the same sources or related sets to obtain the sample for both populations. And all that means is that your second set of data is going to depend on your first one. For example, we've got five laptops, and they crashed one time, three times, four times, two times, and three times. Recently, their antivirus put out a new update. So the company would like to see if that update helped or hindered the computers. In this case, there were four crashes on the first one, six crashes on the second one, seven on the third one, three on the fourth one, and just one crash on the fourth one. This is what we are going to call a dependent sample because the data points in the second series depended on what happened to the first. We modify the first set and then the outcome depended on what happened to the first set. All right, and here's the formulas. The numbers are not written out to save some space and we're just going to go ahead and walk through one. The first thing you want to do is set up a formula that says D equals B minus A. And all that means is you're going to take all of your B data points which for this case we're going to use the second line as B minus all of your A or the first set of data points. In this case it would be 4 minus 1, 6 minus 3, 7 minus 4, 3 minus 2, and 1 minus 3. And once you do that you'll end up with 3, 3, 1, and negative 2. The next formula says to add all those together and then divide it by the number. And this is your mean of D, or the mean of the difference, which comes out to 1.6. The degrees of freedom are going to be n minus 1, which n is 5 because there's five different cases, so your degrees of freedom is 4. Next you'll need to get the standard deviation. To do that, it's the square root of sigma x minus mu squared divided by n minus 1. And you'll have to go and do the x, x minus the mean, x minus the mean squared plot, which we've covered before. When you do that, you find that the sigma of x minus mu squared is 19.2 and n minus 1 is 4. When you divide that and square root it, it's 2.19 as your standard deviation. Next, we've got to move up to the standard error. Standard error formula is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So the standard deviation that we just got was 2.19 divided by the square root of 5. That all adds up to 0.98. Now here's where we finally get to the actual t-score. The formula for the t-score is mu minus the null hypothesis divided by the standard error. Well, okay, we've got mu, we figured that out up here, and we've got the standard error, we just did that. But what is this null? Well, in hypothesis testing, there are two hypotheses. There's the research hypothesis, which we're trying to support. You can never say prove, but we're trying to support it. And the null hypothesis, which we're trying to reject. The research hypothesis, in this case, would be that the update of the antivirus has an effect on the laptops, be that a positive effect or a negative effect, that's for a one-tailed test, but this is a two-tailed. So it's just that it has an effect. The null hypothesis is that it had no effect whatsoever. So in this case, the null hypothesis would be zero, because it had no effect. So we've got a mean of 1.6 minus zero divided by 0.98. When that all comes out, you're going to get a t-score of 1.63. Now, if you'll go over to your book, you'll find the t-table. Should be right in the back. Should be in Appendix B. And if you go to the two-tailed test, you'll find that at 4 degrees of freedom, at 0 0.05 level of significance, you need a t-score of 2.776 or higher to be significant. 
With our current t-score of 1.63, it is not significant. This means that the null hypothesis has been accepted, although not proven, never proven, has been accepted and that the update had seemingly no effect on the laptops. I hope this helped you understand dependent t-tests just a little better, and if you have any more questions or just want to know a little bit more about it, have a look at the link at the end. Have a good day!